Okay, now at this point, we shall move to our next subtopic and that relates to constructing objective supply type of test items. So we just had categorized the different test types, okay, like supply type. Okay, we have the selected response type where you're having the binary choice as an example, multiple choice, okay, having different choices, and of course, the performance test type. Now, we are going to discuss the ways and how we could devise, craft, or construct our objective supply type of test items. Now, on your screen, you would see the table that illustrates a completion type of test. So this composes the stimulus and response. So the stimulus is uh, on the first column, while the response, the possible response, is uh, on the third column. So this sample is otherwise known as gut filling. Obviously, we have a blank. They have to fill in the blank. So it's a type of gap filling or a completion type of test. So under the stimulus, you would see uh, the illustrative items that are A. A four-sided polygon is called blank. That's the stimulus. And what's missing? It's represented by a blank. Again, I repeat, be careful if you are using the completion type of test. The blank should, uh, we should avoid uh, placing this blank at the beginning because we need first to give them the idea what we are looking for. We give them information and what we are assessing, okay? And the possible response, the expected response is quadrilateral. For B, we have the novel, No Limitangere, was written by Dr. Hesariza during the blank colonial period. And the answer is Spanish. Okay. Obviously, based from example letters A and B, for this completion type, we are looking for one specific answer. So it's easy to check. Okay, it's easy to check. And all the learners have to do is to provide the answer. Next is uh, C, a book trader sells books 30% more than what he pays for them. For a book sold for 150 pesos, his profit is blank pesos. The answer is uh, 45. So usually for language teachers, uh, they use this type to develop more than one skill. Like they want, like to focus on, they would like to focus on vocabulary and uh, comprehension skills. And I repeat, this is a completion type of test. Now, uh, we have another example of gap filling or completion type of test. So intended learning outcome is to provide synonyms for target words in a paragraph. So the direction states, Again, when we write our directions, it's also very important, okay? It's also very crucial that it's clear, okay? It should be written in a simple, clear, if you could write it in the shortest way possible, then do it, okay? Like fill in the blanks with the correct answer, as simple as that. We do not add unnecessary information that will just cloud or vague the instructions and will make the learners uh, poorly understood what you really mean with the instructions. Because sometimes, even if they know the answer, but if they do not follow the directions, it still be considered correct. And it doesn't mean that they are wrong. They are they do not know the answer in that case. They are wrong because they did not follow the instructions. Okay? So more than a few uh, people may confuse fine dining with black. Okay? The word is costly. Uh, dining in restaurants. So under costly, you may indicate uh, expensive, okay, as an answer. Oh, Fine dining with expensive dining in uh, restaurants. Okay, that's a synonym. Well trained cooks or chefs uh, at the top of their profession can make good blank. Okay, uh, you think of a synonym for name in this place, that could be a good brand. Okay, can make their good image. Okay, their good, uh, aside from name, what other possible synonym could we give for this one? It could be. Uh, Profile, okay, can make their good profile in these places. Who the cooks, who the cooks are, okay, there's something wrong with this example from below. Who the cooks would bring blank to the restaurant. Who the cooks are would bring, uh, res should I say, uh, respect, aside from honor, could bring a good reputation to the restaurant could bring uh, awards to the restaurant. So who the cooks are bring uh, respect to the restaurant. Actually, the sentence is correct. Okay, I was just confused on the first reading because it's what it was chopped okay, after the. So again, this is an example uh, of uh, a gap filling type of test or a completion type of test in a paragraph. So it could also be structured in this way. 
Now we have these guidelines in test development on completion tests. First, there should only be one correct response to complete a statement. Because I repeat, this is a supply type of test and it's about recall. It's about specific fact. Therefore, there should only be one correct answer. This is also for the purpose of easy scoring. Next, the blank should be placed at the end or towards the end of the incomplete statement. So this is for providing appropriate and enough information to your learners, to the test takers. Number three, avoid providing unintended clues to the correct answer. Clues such as using articles or anything that suggests for letter or quantity of the answer. Like, of course, if you use uh, a blank, and blank, definitely it's a hint that the answer begins with either a consonant or vowel letter, okay? For a short answer, okay, similar to completion type, as you can see on the screen, this can assess learners the, both declarative and uh, procedural knowledge, okay, which requires, uh, which requires uh, thinking processes as remembering, comprehending, and Applying. So using the same uh, example as we had a while back, okay, for stimulus, uh, incomplete, an inter interrogative statement, okay, this is an interrogative statement in which they have to provide an answer. So again, short answer, it's not, got, actually the purpose is just the same, it's just different in terms of blank. And I repeat, um, for this short answer, aside from basic recall, aside from remembering, it could also test the comprehension and the application part of the learner. So to illustrate in this, we have the example questions. What is a four-sided polygon called? The answer is quadrilateral. Number two, or letter B, during what period was no limitangere written by Dr. Hazarizal? Of course, we have the Spanish period. Okay, letter C, how much does a book trader gain for a book he sells for 150 pesos if he gets 30% more than uh, what uh, he paid for it? So the answer, of course, is 45. So on your screen is example stimulus okay, with illustration and the possible response. Now, the guidelines in the, the test development on short item test, okay, or short response. So one by one, we'll be listing the guidelines, okay, the, the suggestions for you to know what to do and what not to do when constructing these types of tests. Number one, state the item so that only one answer is correct for easy checking. I repeat, state the item so that uh, the required answer is brief. Okay, when you state the item, you assess, will the answer be brief or will it require uh, the learner to create a paragraph? Because sometimes we are expecting a short answer, but the way we devise the question, the way we devise the item, you are demanding an entire paragraph or demanding them to, to explain instead of stating just a short answer. So I repeat, uh, you assess on that part in order not to receive long responses if your goal is for them to write short answer and another this is also to be cautious with the time okay you are expecting a short answer but they will answer in a lengthy uh, composition in a lengthy response which will consume a lot of time okay which could be a possible threat for them to accomplish completely the entire test so state the item so that the required answer is brief for short answer test Number three, do not use questions verbatim from textbooks and other materials. We have to reword, we have to paraphrase in order to assess if they really comprehend it because it's a different aspect if they understood what was read or they just memorized what was uh, read from the book. Okay, there are students like this. They know how to memorize, okay? They know how to answer uh, your question based on the words, okay, from the textbook that's uh, 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 their key. They use their keywords, okay? This is what we call recall. But sometimes, even if they memorize the keywords, they do not understand what it means. So it's better that we paraphrase from the textbooks, okay? Designate units required for the answer. So for example, if you are asking uh, how much will this item cost in Philippine currency, that's specific, okay? You are asking for Philippine currency, that's peso. Not how much is this item, even if the context is in the Philippines. If the mindset or the orientation of the, the student, remember these are the first students we are teaching, will be about dollars. The, 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 the child may answer in dollar, okay? So that will be a conflict in terms of checking. And of course, the, the peso, I mean, the, the currency in terms of money, okay, the, when we convert it from peso to dollar, from dollar to yen, from dollar to peso, or whatever currency it is, it differs depending on the economic status of the country and the countries, okay, we are referring to. So we need to be careful when uh, 
we ask about uh, this uh, questions referring to amount to unit so be specific with the unit okay with the unit of measurement you are really asking uh, for next we have state the items using words understood by the learner so this is uh, self-explanatory we do not need to prolong a simple and short item okay we do not e need to use highfalutin words it's not our goal our goal is to assess and make sure that the language we are using is within the level of our learners okay so we're done with uh, the construction of objective supply type of uh, test items. We shall move to the constructing no of non-objective supply type of test. Now the question, how do we construct non-objective supply type of test? I repeat for objective supply type of test items, it's objective because we are looking for one specific answer, either uh, a short response or something that they need to fill in, like uh, for gap filling. Now, for non-objective uh, supply type of test, we are talking about the essay type of test, which could be uh, restricted or extended. Now, on your screen, you would see the table about the restricted response type of test and the extended response type of test, which are the two major classification of essay type of test. So this type is also under the supply type category. Okay, but I repeat, it could be uh, a tool to measure the different levels of uh, knowledge, the different levels of understanding, the different levels of thinking skills, like both the lower and the higher order thinking skills. So since the response will come from the learners, we classify still as supply type, okay? This as a type of test. So this type is less structured. Why? It's because the responses will come from the learners. So they will be the ones to structure. They will be the ones to compose their answers. So expect differing um, composition, different structure from your learners. Do not expect the same pattern, the same uh, sequence of answering, ordering of thoughts okay, from your learners. It will differ, definitely. And if you see some similarities or similar answers, similar pattern, it's actually a sign that somebody copied from the other one. Okay, it's a common in teacher to address that. Okay, so it's I repeat, it's a sign, but it's not automatically an evidence because there could be possibility that uh, they just had the same structure, but they did not copy from each other. Now, for the restricted response type, this suggests a specification in constructing the response. So you are asking them to follow specific standards in answering. Example, you restrict the content. Okay, you restrict the content, that's why it's restricted type of essay. So example of question here is, what is the famous tourist spot in your place? Why? You are just asking about the tourist spot and you are asking the, the learner to justify it. Okay, and the content is about the place. Okay, about uh, the residence, okay, the community in which the learner lives. Okay, restricted content. We also have the restricted length, like using two to three sentences, describe. Using one paragraph, describe. Using a... Uh, Three sentences, explain, okay? Restricted form, for example, prepare a two-tire outline. So you are asking your learners to write a two-tire outline. So the exact form is there, okay? The exact form of answering is there. It could be in, in this way. Uh, you uh, prepare a letter addressing it to the principal, asking the principal to uh, blank. Okay, that's restricted form because uh, we are expecting an exact form, a writing form coming from the learner. In, in here, they're going to write their answer following that format, okay? We also have the restricted perspective under this uh, type of essay. Example is, describe the origin of man according to Charles Darwin, okay? Those are the reasons why we call this uh, type of essay as the restricted response type. Okay, we also have on the other column, the extended response type of test. So in here, um, the question or directive does not suggest any form of restriction in the construction of the response. The students, therefore, are free to organize and expound their ideas. So it's about asking their opinion, expanding their ideas, okay, their insights, their understanding using their own format, using their own length. Okay, using their own uh, examples okay, in relation to the question. But of course, even if this is extended uh, response type of essay, still make sure that they still focus on the question. Okay, 
in a way, that's the restriction for extended response time. They should not go beyond the question. They should not answer any other question aside from the essay question which we have posted. Okay? So in here, this provides freedom, interesting content, but still focuses on the question like what I mentioned. It provides varying choices in evidence. So one learner could cite her example in relation to the topic or the content. Uh, I mean to the uh, question. The other learner could cite another example. So we are not limited to one type of example here. Now, our suggestion for uh, constructing essay questions are as follows. Okay, first, we need to restrict the use of essay questions to those learning outcomes that cannot be measured satisfactorily by objective test items. Okay, though essay is easy to construct, it requires uh, you to analyze the type of question we are posing. Does it reflect okay, what we have stated in our intended learning outcome? If you ask them to write, I repeat, Okay, in the essay type, then they may write and produce an output. If you ask them to explain, okay, aside from oral explanation, you may ask them to write uh, the essay type of test. This is a way uh, to check on all of your learners, okay? Because under recitation, oral recitation, you have to ask them one by one, okay? And of course, if you have raised the question to the other ones, to the, uh, let's say, for instance, few students, it will not be repeated to the others because they have read, okay? They have heard about the answer, so... It's uh, uh, important that we consider that. Next, number two, construct questions that will call for the skills specified in the learning standards. as what we have discussed. Uh, number three, phrase the question so that the student's task is clearly defined. Number four, indicate an approximate time limit for each question. Okay? Um, essay is a set to construct. And uh, the uh, disadvantage here is that it's not easy to check. Okay, it requires time in checking, which could be prone to teacher's subjective point of view. Now, to address that, okay, to address your subjective point of view and to avoid biases, refrain, or at least minimize the biases, we need to use analytic scoring. Okay, we need to prepare analytic scoring. And what is this analytic scoring? One good example is the use of rubric. Okay, like for essays on specific genre, we use rubric for analytics scoring. At least you have a guide what to check. At least you have... Uh, the criteria on which aspect are you checking in the essay because sometimes we are just asking for the thought we are just asking for the idea but once we see grammatical errors it affects our scoring so let's make sure uh let's make clear about our uh, parameters let's make clear about our criteria and they should be related to our learners as what we have mentioned about uh ethics in assessment it should be clear and uh, uh, transparent Next, number five, we need to avoid the use of uh, optional questions or letting learners to choose a question they would like to answer among the list. Like you have six essay questions and then you instructed that you choose three questions from the six uh, essay type of test and answer them. It's like letting them, giving them the opportunity to write or to answer what they know, what they, what they know from the list of choices. It's giving them the option not to answer those aspects which they do not know, which actually preempts the goal that we need to measure what we have stated. We need to measure the competencies that we have uh, clearly implemented when we taught our learners. So we need to assess everything, okay, to make sure that they have gained something from the discussion. Now, if you will give them option, it's like missing the other competencies, okay, because you are not gauging the other competencies, okay? Now, Going back to analytic scoring and rubric, on your screen, you would see uh, the example of analytic uh, scoring using rubric. So we have, of course, uh, the criterion 1, criterion 2, criterion 3, criterion 4. So you could specify it here, like if this is about grammar, criterion 1, criterion 2, is it about organization, criterion 3, content, criterion 4, uh, it could be about uh, the impact. Okay, the overall impact of the paragraph. And you could assign percentages. Okay, and then you have the legend above. Okay, one point for beginning level, two points for developing, three points for accomplish, uh, four points for exemplary. And then you have the specific description for each level for you to be guided. Okay, now we have uh, this uh, suggestions in constructing the essay type of test, of course. Number one, prepare an outline of the expected answer in advance. Why? Sometimes we ask them to write uh, to answer an essay type of test even without knowing the possible correct answer to our question. 
Okay, so at least we have a guide. And once you see keywords, okay, similarities from your guide from the expected answer, especially if it's restricted. Okay, it's a restricted type of essay. You really need to prepare an outline for the possible or expected answer. Next, number two, use the scoring rubric that is most appropriate. So align the criterion, align the legend which you are going to use for the essay type of test. It's not simply scoring uh, 99 over 100. There should be a basis. Decide how to handle factors that are irrelevant to uh, the learning outcomes being measured. Like uh, even if it's uh, grammatically correct completely. Okay, but if the content is not really answering the question, so how would you decide? Okay, think of this. Also, the penmanship. Okay, goodness sake. The penmanship sometimes affect the way the teachers would score. And it should not be like that. Okay, unless the penmanship or handwriting is part of the criteria. That's why for online class, it's an advantage that you submit your essay type of test online. You have the same uh, style, uh, the same font style to use. Evaluate all responses to one question before uh, going on to the next one. Okay, it's like reading everything. Okay, reading everything um, in order for you to, to have some sort of comparison on the answers of the learners. Okay, at least you would see which one really stood out. Okay, that's also uh, a way of uh, using or judging using the norms. Okay, it's like what we have studied in our previous uh session it's like treating your learners by means of comparing okay, the output to the output of the others so it will be fair enough to give the high score the highest score to this group or to this student in comparison to the output of the other group okay when possible evaluate answers without looking at the student's name to avoid biases to avoid favoritism like if you think you are checking the uh if you know that you are checking the test paper or the essay of a uh, the uh, leading student, the expert learners, it's already an advantage because automatically you have the positive impression and we need to avoid that. So as much as possible, um, you refrain from uh, basing the score on the name. So if you could ask them not to write the name, use codes, okay, that will be better. If especially important decisions okay, are to be based on the results, obtain two or more independent readings. So if you could ask other teachers to decide, okay, to score, okay, for you to have a different perspective about the scoring because a soul, you will be the sole judge. But if you would ask other experts to check on the test paper, but though sometimes, no, it's uh, impossible to happen because we are all busy doing our own uh, chores, our own tasks as teachers. But I repeat, if you have the chance, the option, okay, the opportunity to seek the advice, seek the rating of the other teachers, on the essay, especially if it's a competition. We need to have lots of judges, okay? We need to have a jury, okay? A group of judges in order to make sure that you are having a result or you have a result which is reliable. That makes your re results more reliable, okay? Because what do we mean by here? What could mean good to you may not mean good to other. We have different tastes. So this is to make some sort of balance. Okay, when it comes to checking. So if, I repeat, unimportant decisions are to be used on the results, like uh, you, have, uh, you have received complaints okay, from uh, parents or from learners, we answer the same, I'm better than this, than one. You, you seek the advice of others. So you would know uh, which essay is really the better version. Okay, so that's all about constructing non-objective supply type of test. Next, we move to the constructing of selected response type of test.